when you consider the overall outcome. The physiology is a little complicated, but we'll see that in a minute. Uh, first of all, there's three types of muscle in the body. There's skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is the type of muscle you think of when you think of somebody having muscles or making a muscle or having sore muscles. Uh, cardiac muscle is the type of muscle that's found in the heart, not surprisingly, that its name implies cardiac muscle. And smooth muscle is the type of muscle that causes movement in other parts of the body, like the digestive system, moving things through that long tube. Is that smooth? Smooth. It's named such. I'm sorry. I don't know. Because of the uh, appearance when it's viewed under a microscope. You know, the skeletal muscle has these, what we call striations, these stripes that run across the muscle cells, the muscle tissue. And uh, the same thing if you look under cardiac impact, you'll see the same sort of striations. But you will not see that on smooth muscle that's been under smooth. Smooth muscle is involuntary. So, like, the muscle that moves blood through your arteries, the muscle that helps to move that egg down the fallopian tube, the, the muscle that helps to move urine from the kidneys down to the bladder, that is muscle that is smooth, that's helping to move things along. We find muscle in the tubes of our airways, in the bronchioles, for instance, that's going to change the diameter of those tubes, which is going to change the amount of airflow through those tubes. So in this chapter, they're focusing basically on just skeletal muscle, the muscle that moves the body around, attached to the skeleton. Remember, all a muscle does is it gets shorter. And in getting shorter, it's going to pull things closer to one another, which is going to create some kind of movement. Yes. It is also involuntary, by the way. Thankfully, cardiac muscle is involuntary because I would have forgotten by now. What did I have to do this morning? Oh, that's right. Make my heart contract and pump blood out to my brain. Skeletal muscle is voluntary. You want to move your leg? Move your leg. Want to wiggle your toes? Wiggle your toes. Do you want to express some sort of displeasure at my driving skills as you pass me in your car by raising one finger? <laughs> voluntary. I don't know what just happened. What did I just do? Okay. Guys, when we talk about that posture. Now, the confusing part here is body heat. I want, to, I want you to realize something. All our cells in our bodies create energy, right? And the process of creating energy and creating heat is a byproduct. So muscle is not the only thing that creates body heat. However, in times where we're cold, our body wants to create more heat as our body temperature starts to go lower. So what's going to happen is those cells are going to work more. Because remember, if a cell is working to create energy, the more it works, the more energy it's going to create, but the more heat it's also going to create. So what will happen is these muscle cells will work to create more energy quickly and create more heat quickly. So muscle cells contract. That's what they do for work. So they'll contract quickly and then relax quickly, and contract quickly and relax quickly, and contract quickly and relax quickly. And we call that a shiver. So when we do that, the reason is the body is trying to create more heat. Now, it includes respiration, which is an important uh, thing that our uh, muscle does, because our diaphragm, that dome-shaped muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity, that dome-shaped muscle 
is just that. It's a big muscle, so it's going to contract. And of course, our muscles contract and become shorter. So dome-shaped muscle becomes less dome-shaped. Again, I'm exaggerating quite a bit, but it goes from a dome-shaped muscle to a less dome-shaped muscle. And upon that contraction, we're going to have lower air pressure within the lungs compared to the outside world, so air is going to come rushing in. So when that muscle contracts, it causes <coughs> air to come in. As that muscle relaxes, air passively moves back out. Although we can force air out of our lungs, can't we? Yeah. Yes. You learn this as you get older. Because when you are young and you only have three candles on the cake, it's easy to go and blow them out. But when you become 18 years old, you got to blow out 18 candles. Oh. you got to force all that air out of your lungs. When you become 40, no, you stop no celebrating idea. birthdays. Well, at that point, you, you, know, you just, the numbers. You just forget about birthdays altogether. You, you put one candle and a bottle of wine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're not kidding. That's what life begins. That's what life begins. I agree. 40 is the new 20. Uh, I ain't going to say 20. Okay. Uh, it, al it also helps <laughs> us to force air. Stop it. It also helps <laughs> us to force air out of our lungs. Like when we cough. Why do we cough? I know. The reaction to what? You're right. Reaction to what? Stuff in our bodies. Stuff in our bodies, yeah. Stuff in our bodies that we don't want there. Specifically, what part of our body? A respiratory system. Yes. So we want to... <laughs> <laughs> get those things out. So it's a forceful expulsion of air. And that requires muscles. We see a lot of those muscles, uh, for instance, some of the muscles in the ribs. We'll talk about those later. Those are awesome. And obviously we use muscle for communication, like that gentleman driver who did not appreciate my driving skills and communicated using just one finger. Or uh, in some cases, people communicate in other ways, like how? Um, talking. Talking. Even speaking. Yes. In order to speak, you have to use muscles. Sign language, certainly. <laughs> How about if you like somebody? Eye contact, body language. Facial expression. Do you smile at them? Sometimes. You don't know that. And what if you don't like them? Yeah. There you go. What's the name of that muscle that does that? Oh, I, I, I did forget, but it's the longest the one. It's the it's the longest named muscle in the body. It's called the levator labii superior oh, nasal yeah. muscle. Exactly. And that's on the test and spelling counts. Huh? Oh, how about the same? So we communicate in lots of different ways, right? And those things require movement. Now, here's the thing about skeletal muscle. I already mentioned the striations. The striations are these stripes that run across uh, these, these cells, these tissues. And um, you'll see why later on. We talk about this in anatomy and physiology. We go a little more in depth of how these cells are created. And under, understand this, by the way. When we talk about the liver, we talk about the liver cells. We talk about bone, we talk about bone cells. We talk about the brain, we talk about brain cells. We talk about skin, we talk about skin cells. We talk about muscle, we talk about muscle fibers. And the reality is, it's still just a cell. So you'll hear me call it muscle cell, muscle cell, muscle cell, muscle cell. But in the textbook and other places, you'll see them call it muscle fibers. Because when we talk about muscle, for some reason, they decided to change it on us to make it more confusing. So a muscle fiber is just a muscle cell. And the components inside of that muscle cell are somewhat unique. It's mostly made up of a whole bunch of tubes stuffed inside of this long cell. And those tubes are divided into different components that we'll see these smaller tubules that sort of can uh, pull across one another. And that's what creates the different striped patterns, the striations. A muscle has a wrapping around it. I always sort of compare it to like um, a saran wrap, wrapped around muscle to keep everything together. It's called fascia. Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of the, or, and or number of muscle cells. So think of the bodybuilder. 
increase in the size or the number of the muscle cells? What is that? Hypertrophy. Hypertrophy, increase in the size or what? Ultimately? Number. Or number of muscle cells. Muscle, so muscles get bigger. Okay. That's it, increase muscle cells. I we'll talk more about it in anatomy and physiology. Don't yeah, worry about that. Bash is more like a saran wrap wrapping around the muscle. Relax, you guys are way too uptight with this stuff. Atrophy. <laughs> Atrophy is just the opposite of hypertrophy. Muscle, muscle loses mass. Yes. So we'll see them shrink. We sometimes call it muscle wasting when we see them shrink. Remember those kids with posture before? Yes. Their body's breaking down all that muscle. Person who's paralyzed from the waist down in a wheelchair. Yeah, their muscles in their legs because they're not getting a signal from their nerves. They're getting smaller and smaller. They're atrophying. They're getting smaller. You even see it in carpal tunnel syndrome. So you muscle wasting right here, in the base of the thumb, this area called the thenar muscles right here, becomes smaller. Atrophy. Oh dear Lord. Do you know what muscle soreness is? Yeah. I hope so. Muscle soreness is pain in the muscle. Why, why can you have pain in the muscle? Yeah. Working out? There you go. Working out, lifting stuff around the yard. Feel a little achy. But not like you've hurt anything. That's a strain. We've actually injured the muscle. You see the I difference? Fibromyalgia. So what is a cramp? A Very cramp good. is a sudden, severe, prolonged contraction. You'll see this definition in the anatomy. A cramp is a sudden, severe, prolonged contraction. Contraction? Contraction. Yes. Does that come on suddenly? Is it severe? Does it seem like it lasts forever? Yeah. Sudden, severe, prolonged contraction. It is a bad pain. How you know? I've had a trolley horse before. <laughs> I think most people have. Oh my gosh. Um, they so How do you know? You see? There you go. I want to talk about fibromyalgia. And again, we'll talk more about the cramps in that video. Uh, fibromyalgia. Basically, the patient will complain of muscle pain, joint pain, all over. Now, the problem with fibromyalgia is fibromyalgia is a disease of exclusion. In other words, we don't know what causes it. We don't have a test for it. Before you argue and say, well, wait a minute, yes, there is a test. It's called the pressure point test. The pressure point test relies on the patient telling us if there's pain or not. And is pain a sign or a symptom? Is pain a sign or a symptom? It's a symptom. So if all we're relying on is that the patient tells us if there, if there, if there is pain or not, that's not terribly reliable. So fibromyalgia is a disease of exclusion. If a person is having pain all over their body, in their joints and their muscles, what could the problem be? Could they have broken bones? No. No? They can't bones. Yeah, they can. Yeah. Sure they can. Do they have dislocations? Yeah. Sure they can. Can they have uh, a blood disorder? Mm -hmm. Sure they can. Can they have nerve damage? Sure they can. Can they have muscle damage? Sure they can. 
So we have to test for all of those things first. When all of those things come back negative, then we can do the PowerPoint test. We press on like 18 different areas of the exhibit pane, and I think 12 of 18, or 14 of 18, and then we can see now we know it's fibromyalgia. Oh, wow. This is why we say it's a disease of exclusion. You got to rule out everything else, everything else out first. Rule out everything else first. Yes, that's better. Rule out everything else first. Now, here's another thing about fibromyalgia. There tends to be an association with depression or anxiety, social stressors. Meaning, it might be psychosomatic. Have you heard that term before, psychosomatic? Yes. We don't really know. So when we treat this Wait, patient, may be psychosomatic? Or, mm -hmm. oh. So when we treat this, we're going to treat the pain because the pain is real. And then we're also going to treat with something like an antidepressant or anti-anxiety. That tends to be the protocol. Still a lot to learn about fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia might be several different diseases that we just haven't identified and sort of put them all under one umbrella. We call it all fibromyalgia. Come back in 50 years, I'll let you know that. Okay. Maybe not. I might still be alive. Eating pudding. Uh, myasthenia gravis. as long as the zombie apocalypse doesn't take care of the rest of us out. Myasthenia gravis is a disease I'm not going to talk about today. Because I don't know what it is. <laughs> wow. I'm just kidding. Uh, myasthenia gravis is actually an autoimmune disease. And it's, a, it's interesting. I will go over it in anatomy because it destroys the receptors on the muscle fibers. So the muscle itself is fine, the nerve sending signal in the muscle are fine, the, uh, everything is doing its job just fine, but the receptors on the muscles just aren't getting the message because they're getting destroyed. So here's what we need to do. Uh, we can either block an uptake molecule, uh, or an uptake instrument we'll call him, we will see him later, call it cholinesterase, <coughs> which will increase the amount of neurotransmitter that is, or that is uh, in that junction, that neuromuscular junction. And again, we'll talk about this tomorrow. Or we can take out the thymus. But the problem is, um, once the receptors are destroyed, they're destroyed. So myasthenia gravis is actually a really good model to use uh, when learning about physiology. So I am going to talk about it tomorrow in the muscle physiology part in a little more detail. And it will make more sense then, so don't worry too much about it now. But it is autoimmune. Now we talked about uh, cells. So we talked about how cells have little organs in them, right? Organelles. Remember hearing that word? Organelles. Meaning little organs? Yes. So they also sort of have a little skeletal system of sorts. And the skeletal system of sorts that we find inside of a cell is made up of a protein called dystrophin. These patients are lacking much <coughs> or some of that protein. So this is a genetic defect where they're not making the protein like they should be. It causes very weak muscles. Kids are getting wheelchairs. Um, there's two types of muscular dystrophy, and we'll talk about those. Duchenne, the muscular dystrophy, and the vectors. We'll talk about those um, tomorrow. I'm sorry? Are those, those, are, those are the two main ones. But there's probably several variants. Rapid. Okay. Okay. This, this is less likely to be fatal as compared to some of the other ones we're going to talk about. Uh, we'll see a lot more commonly that it's simply going to put the person in a wheelchair. 
Could they still be at the lockdown? <laughs> with Beckers, they might, because that is less severe. Uh, it's also less common. Uh, the Duchesne's muscular dystrophy, actually, what, two thirds of Duchesne's is inherited? Yeah, two thirds of Duchesne's is inherited, one third is just a brand new mistake. And those patients are going to have little to no dystrophy, so they're going to be in a wheelchair. Rhabdomyolysis. Oh, this is lysis means to break apart. We talked about that before with red blood cells. We talked about hemolysis, the break, uh, the red blood cells breaking apart. So rhabdomyolysis. This is actually rhabdomyo is the skeletal muscle. So this is the breakdown of skeletal muscle. I think it includes this in your book. Um, that one of the severe, the, the really worrisome complications of rhabdomyolysis is actually the effects that it has on the kidneys. Yes. As those cells are broken down, the breakdown products affect the kidneys and cause renal failure. That's a big deal. So that's the big concern with rhabdomyolysis. So we're, we're concerned about muscles breaking down for whatever reason, but we're also concerned about how it's going to affect the kidneys. Because remember, brain, heart, kidneys, always in that order, right? Anything different from alcohol It certainly and could be. Um, it could also be the result of, uh, of arterial blockage. Um, what was that? Doctor's name, who was a real jerk, walked with a limp, oh. but was always right. Oh, Allison, no. I thought you were going to say me, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> I know you're thinking, no, jerk who's way too polite to oh. describe you. Uh, one of the things he had, he, has an he had arterial clots, which caused blood. A flow to muscles in his leg to be decreased, which means some of that tissue started to die, which is why the correct treatment for that would have been amputation. That would have been most likely what would have happened, but he fought against it, which meant he knew he was going to live with chronic pain the rest of his life. That's why he started getting obsessed with little tips. Do you have you seen Unbreakable? Well, he was born with it. All his bones are like. Where's the Delphoid muscle working? Mm -hmm. It's the shoulder muscle right here. This is the muscle that lifts the arm up and away from the body like this. This is the model, mo model? Mm -hmm. this is the muscle that you're going to give injections into. No. When you give intramuscular injections, this is the one, one of the ones that you're giving intramuscular injection into. The deltoids, so you need to know that one. That's going to be on a certification exam somewhere down the line. They're going to ask you about injections into the deltoid muscle. Shoulder muscle. Yes. The pectoralis major muscle. Just Why would they call it the pectoralis Pex. major? Oh, major. Because there's Middle. a big one. Unless there's a pectoralis minor. And there is, just beneath it, much smaller. This is the big chest muscle. The pectoralis major is the big chest muscle that is going to help push yourself up off the floor. It's going to help push the door open. Okay. <laughs> it's so, a rare genetic defect. It happens in one out of no. Where is it okay? <laughs> the big chest muscle. And the other one would just be. The pectoralis minor is just underneath. Just. Yeah. We'll see those again. Yeah. The latissimus dorsi. Some of the muscles in the back. Uh, when you look at the bodybuilders, they make that sort of wing appearance. Yeah. They come up, they're in the back, they come around to the side a little bit right here. 
These are the muscles that you use to pull yourself up. Yeah, because I'm <laughs> strong like a bull. So yeah, um, you have to row a boat. These assist in that as well. If you find yourself you know, <laughs> rowing boats. Would that be your little exercise? Yeah. Sure. I roll a boat. Sure, that's all. That's all exercise. You're using muscles. Move yourself around. That's good. If you have your arm like this and you want your arm to go like this, you have to have a muscle that contracts to do this. And actually, here there's two that contract to do this. The main muscle that contracts to do this is the bicep brachii muscle. Bicep because it has two places where it starts. The brachialis is smaller, it's in here and it assists with that. So that one I don't put as much uh, stress upon. The bicep brachialis is the big muscle. How do you pronounce it? Anterior. Anterior. The front, right? This is the front of the body. Oh my God, it's so cold in here. Oh, Probably has something to do with the temperature. Um, the brachioradialis is that big forearm muscle that's right here. Helps with pulling things this way, for instance. Big brachioradialis muscle. Helps with pulling the this way? Like this. So sort of like pulling yourself, towards like your you. wrist towards you and, and downward like this. That's a brachioradialis? Uh, that would be what, pronation, yes, brachioradialis. It's a big muscle in the forearm. In fact, look at here for a minute. My fingers right here. When I want my fingers to do like this, where are the muscles located that make my fingers do that? In your forearm. Yeah. The muscles that do this are actually down here. And the tendons run all the way up here, across the palm and each individually to the tips of the fingers. So when those muscles down here contract, it's like a puppet pulling on strings. It's going to cause the fingers to do this. <coughs> Which means when I want my fingers to go back the way they were, the muscles are going to be Not here. Right. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. And is it the right here? Right no, no. These are these are muscles in the forearm and, and digital extensor muscles okay. um, that are doing this here. I bring this up uh, because... When I have my arm like this, and I bring my arm, I want to put my arm like this, that's the bicep brachii muscle, right? Mm -hmm. Hold my arm this way. What if I don't want to spend all day with my arm like this? Would you put it back? I don't release it. I have to move it back. So what causes sure. movement? Muscle. muscle. So if I have a muscle that's going to pull my arm this way, I'm going to have a muscle to put it back the way that it was. So that's why I bring this up. That's why certain muscles, like when people only can have their arm this way because they, a certain muscle has like been removed or never been Or like replaced. it's getting a total signal saying contract, 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 contract. Forever. It's like, it's called a contracture. It's just constantly being contracted. Is it, is it because the, mus the muscle is no longer of use or the no, muscle is not there? No, neither. It's actually the muscles getting, a, uh, the nerves causing a problem that's sending a signal to the muscle to contract, contract, contract. And that's it? And that's the only thing the muscle will have to do is contract, contract, contract. Yeah. It's not giving no signal to do nothing. No. Because okay. if you try to move it back this way, it'll just go it's back to that contract. Because that's what the nerves are telling That's what the nerves are starting to do, yeah. Oh, okay. It's called a contracture. Uh -huh. Yes. So, like a pinch nerve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 Can you wait? Can you wait until Thursday? Yeah. Because we're going to talk about the nervous system and the nervous down a little bit. That's tomorrow, right? No. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it is? Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, there's um, it. We're going to talk more about nerves and how they, and, and more about how the muscles interact with the nerves. Okay. And that'll make a little more sense. Okay. Thank you. I'm not just stalling for time because I don't know the answer to that. I know you know the answer. So, for most muscles in our body, if we have a muscle that moves something in a position, we're going to want to have a muscle move it back. Mm -hmm. That kind of makes sense, right? You don't want to spend all day walking your arm in one position if you can help it. Um, in this case, it's the tricep brachii that's on the posterior aspect here. 
it actually has three places where it starts. That's going to pull the arm straight again. So when that muscle contracts, it pulls the arm this way. What that means is when this muscle, the bicep, contracts, this muscle has to be relaxed. They both can't contract at the same time because they're pulling opposite one another. Oh, really? So when this muscle contracts, this muscle has to relax. When this muscle contracts, this muscle has to relax. So when bicep contracts, tricep, tricep relaxes. When the tricep contracts, bicep relaxes. Both of them can't move at the same time. No, because if they pull at the same time, they would do nothing. They would literally. Uh, Wait, do it again. Because <laughs> I'll never see that. No, okay. There it is. That's exactly what would happen. That, that, that is what happened? Sort of, yeah. Okay. Because. It, it, it's not going to make you stronger, it's going to do just the opposite, it's going to make you weaker. It's confusion. Yeah. yeah. We don't want that to happen. Okay. And I bring, I bring this up because, as I said before, there's over 700 muscles in the human body. That's a lot of muscles to try to remember. I don't remember all 700. There was a time where I probably knew most of them. That was a long time ago. I don't know them anymore. But the way to remember them was to remember them in groups. So if you have a muscle that does this, you have a muscle that does the opposite. So you can group them together that way. It made it much easier to remember muscles that way as to tell you what they did. Correct. Correct. All right. What's the anterior? Anteriorly in the front. Anteriorly in the front. Okay. Posteriorly in the back. Oh, okay. Oh, so front. Bottom side. Correct. Four. Four. That's why you said tricep. Okay. I'm going to push against my fist. Keep pushing. There you go. That's not your bicep doing that, right? No. That's your tricep that's doing that. It's trying to because extend the arm. Extend the arm like this. No, make a muscle. Like, pull it up. Okay, well, you're a lot stronger than me. I'm <laughs> We're not going to mess with you. We don't want any trouble. We're going to work Nice. Yeah. That so that's what, yeah, that's what the bicep does. Bicep pulls up this way, tricep pulls it down. You can feel that tricep pulling it down when I'm pushing resistance against oh, it, right? Okay. So you're trying to straighten your arm. If I'm pushing against it, you can really feel that you have a muscle that's trying to push against it. Does that make oh, sense? Oh, okay. Sorry for flexing my strength. No, I know. <laughs> Sorry for flexing my bro. Don't do that anymore. Uh, we're going to talk about these things later, don't so don't worry about this right now. Okay. <laughs> Here's some butt muscle. <laughs> Gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus. What a time. Yes. Bota. Big giant muscle. Large massive muscle. But here's the thing. <laughs> You'll notice that it's called the gluteus maximus for a reason. It's the maximus, it's, it's the biggest. The biggest. So there must be a smallest. <laughs> gluteus minimus. Where is that? That's mine. <laughs> huh? The maximus is just like a. The maximus is the big one. What is it, the back part? So no, it's still muscle. These are all the muscles. The minimus is right gluteus here, right? Here. Gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus. These are all muscles of the butt. Of the butt. Yeah, of the butt. Of the butt. But, but the big main <laughs> one of the butt is the gluteus maximus. And here's the one that you'll want to know about. The gluteus medius is actually more towards the side. Oh, this is where you're giving injections. Mm. When people give an intramuscular injection, it's actually more in the hip rather than in the butt muscle itself. It doesn't go in the gluteus maximus. It actually goes more towards the gluteus medius. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. um, We'll talk about adductors later. Never. We will. Okay, if you look at the thigh muscles, the from from here to here, uh, there's actually four muscles, four main muscles that make up this group of thigh muscles, and that's why we just clump them together, clump them, group them together, clump them together. Mm -hmm into the quadriceps femoris. <coughs> it is made up of the rectus femoris 
and the three vastus muscles. Vastus, vastus, vastus. For you guys, I will, I will always tell you this. At this level, you don't need to know the individual names except for one. You guys do need to know about the vastus lateralis. And the reason for that is because that's the muscle that you give injections into when you give injections into the thigh. Like when you're given those pediatric vaccinations, the muscle they're going into is the vastus lateralis muscle. So that's something that will probably come up on your certification exams later on. Or at least you'll hear about in the lab later on in giving injections. So you do need to know about that one. I always say, at this level, if you just call this whole group of muscle the quadriceps, that's fine. But I do want you to be aware that this is the one that's going to come up. You're going to hear about this one. That's the one you're giving injection to do. That's just lateral Um Oh. They don't mention the, uh, the sartorius muscle. I don't know why. I thought it was here. I thought it was on here. The sartorius muscle is actually it's the longest muscle in the body. It starts up here on the hip and comes down here. Look, look up here first. It starts on the hip here, on the lateral side, and comes across the leg and inserts down here on the medial side. It's the longest muscle. It's called the sartorius. Medial. And it does this. Oh, I love to cross my legs. Oh. Well, it's not necessary to cross why would we have to have a muscle that does this? Kicking. Kicking, okay. Yes. Soccer, definitely. Soccer, yes. We evolved a muscle just for soccer. <laughs> Worked out well. For stepping, exercise. Close. No, because we got to pull a leg up like this way. Not like this way. Like pull things up. This way. Yeah, and socks. But I, I, so I think a lot of grab things with our toes. I know to grab things with your toes. Yes, I yeah. always, yes, when I was yeah. in elementary. When I got my girl back in, that's how I was picking everything up with my toes. I know, but that's not why. That's not why we evolved it over the millennia, just to be able to pick up stuff with our toes. Yes. Yeah. Um, like but think about our earlier, early ancestors trying to climb a tree. Oh, in order yeah, to get your leg up to the next branch, you got to get your leg up like this. Or we're climbing a rock face, you have to get your leg uh -huh. up like this. So it doesn't have to be a strong muscle, because the strong muscles are the ones that are actually going to push your body up. It has to be strong enough just to get your leg up this way, into this position. Does that make sense? S-A-R-T-O-R-I-U-S. Sartorius. S-A-R-T-O-R-U-R-I-U-S. S-A-R-T-O-R-I-U-S. S-A-R-T-O-R-I-U-S. Us. U.S. Sartorius. Did I forget a letter in there? Oh, and it's the T-O-R-I-U-S. S-A-R-T-O-R-I-U-S. Sartorius. Longest muscle. Longest muscle in the body. I-U-S or Sartorius or I-U-S. Oh dear Lord. Okay. Sar. S-A-R. Tor. T-O-R. Sartorius. I-U-S. Oh, hip, down below the knee. These here, these are all in the front. We're not going to worry about the, the quad tendon. These are all in the front. The ones in the back of the leg, the back of the thigh, upper leg, are here. We call them the hamstrings. Again, at this level, you don't need to know the individual names, but here they are. The biceps femoris, and then the semitendinous and semimembranous. Let me back up for just a moment, though. If you look at this one right here, rectus femoris, yes. the term rectus means straight. What does femoris mean? Thin. What does femoris mean? Muscle. What bone is in the leg here? Femur. 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 So the rectus femoris muscle. Oh, rectus femur. means straight. Straight, straight along straight the femur. Straight, straight along the femur. Oh, straight along. Oh, step on. Rectus femoris. Rectus means straight. Femoris femur. Rectus femoris. Straight along the femur. Okay. Rectus means 
So why re So how do you get rectal? How do you get rectal? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what? Rectus means straight. Too. Rectus means straight. So rectus only rectus. No, rectus means straight. Rectus. Your rectum is straight, though. Rectum is straight. It is when you look at this, the large intestines. Yeah. It goes ascending, oh, transverse, straight. descending. Then it goes sigmoid, the S-shaped part, and then there's the straight, straight. part where there's the storage. It's straight. That makes sense. Well, it does because rectus means straight. And when they were naming all of this, they got to the straight part and said, what do you want to name the straight part? And somebody said, rectal. let's call it the straight part. Okay. That's what they did. That's all they did. It does. If you speak Latin, it's really easy. <laughs> rectus, straight. It's a straight part. They, li they literally put no thought into it. Like the guy who named the fireplace the fireplace. What do you want to call the fireplace? What's the place where the fire goes? The fireplace. Yes. So when they named it, they put no thought into it at all. The straight part they come up with. The straight part is the straight part. <laughs> Got it. Good. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to confuse you. Why? Well, because I don't like you. <laughs> I'm just, listen, listen, I'm just joking. I like five of you. So, <laughs> and I want to find you, you can figure that out. I don't care. Now I want to record you. <laughs> Shut up. Gastrocnemius and soleus. Now, the calf muscle, this is the muscle that's going to plantar flex the feet. So you go like this. It plantar flexes the feet, you so you're standing on your toes. This, this, is the, this, is, shh, this is the calf muscle. Plantar flexes the foot. The calf muscle is made up of two parts, a big part and a smaller part. The big part is called the gastrocnemius. The smaller part is called the soleus. Now, here's where I'm going to confuse you. What does gastro mean? Stomach. Stomach. This is a muscle in your calf. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you would think, well, what does that have to do with stomach? But look closely. This is not gastro. This is gastroc. Uh. So the question is, what does gastroc mean? Calf. No, it also means stomach. Oh. <laughs> like I said, this is where I'm going to confuse you. Okay. Yes, it is the stomach muscle of the calf. I don't know. I wish I wish I could go back in time and ask a few questions. Blepharo. You said the stomach muscle of the calf. Don't, listen, for some reason, they thought it resembled the stomach. That's what I was going to ask you. So if you see this word and I say, is that a calf muscle? Don't think. Well, it can't be a calf muscle because gastro means stomach, and that's not a calf muscle. Well, actually, in this case, it is. That's why I said I'm going to confuse you. Are you confused? No. Good. I'm done. No, 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 don't be done. No, I'm done. Stop the Can just join the one Achilles? I forgot the word again. Calcaneus. Calcaneus. That's the, that's the, uh, muscle that the bone right? Yes, that is the big heel bone. So the tendon that comes from the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles together form a long tendon that attaches to that heel bone, the calcaneus. So when that muscle contracts, it causes the foot to pivot downward because it pulls up on the heel. Just As it pulls up on the heel, both of these together, the calf muscles together, become this one tendon. It pulls up on the heel, which causes the toes oh. to point downward. Wait. Oh, I see it. You're saying the, the two muscles right there, which are the gastro gastro gastrocnemius, gastrocnemius and soleus, and soleus. They're, them two together creates that word or the just Achilles tendon. The, oh, the, the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon. Wait, okay. so which one is the stomach? 
Oh, okay. Okay. Gastrocnemia. Okay. Gastrocnemia. For some it's reason, I know. Wow, I don't know. They work together. However, you want to put it, because I wasn't there. For some reason, they called it the stomach muscle of the leg or stomach muscle of the calf. They thought it resembled the stomach, so that's why it has stomach in its name. Okay. But it has nothing to do with your stomach. Oh, okay. What does mean? I don't know. That I don't know. I seriously don't know. Okay. I'll look it up. Because I want to know. <laughs> so is that said, that's, that's located by the S word? Soleus. It's just a small piece beside the gastric? Yes. Right here? Right. Because if you look at the calf muscle, it sort of has a heart shape to yeah, it. Yeah. One side much bigger than the other. And then beside the side, oh. you have to move. Oh. Okay. Oh, right here. Mm -hmm. Right there. So, so all of that forms the Achilles tendon, okay. which comes down and attaches to the calcaneus bone in the heel, which causes the foot to pivot downward, the toes to point downward, so it picks you up on your tippy toes. It is called the Achilles tendon from Greek mythology, if you remember this. Do you remember this from Greek mythology? No, sorry, no, I have to play. I actually Achilles, really Achilles was born was to a half mortal. Yes, the mortal father oh, mother. and the okay. mother was a nymph, not nympho, nymph. nymph. <laughs> and she wanted to make her child or son immortal from the arrows of his enemies. So she dipped him into the river Styx to cover his body with the water, which would protect him from the arrows of his enemy. But in dipping him in the water, she had to hold him somewhere. So she held him in that little spot right there where the tendon meets the heel. So those areas where her fingers were did not get touched by the water, which means those were the only areas on his body that were weak. So then later on in battle, an arrow that was shot by Paris of Troy, not to be confused with Paris of Hilton, <laughs> shot that arrow, and it was, well, with a little help from some of the goddesses guided to the right place, hit him there, and that which caused his death. Oh my god, now that makes me want to watch the movie. Which, yes. okay, good. Now, we, now, or, it might also make you want to get this, study anatomy. That's an also thing you could do. Okay. And then after anatomy class is over, after the six weeks, then you could watch the movie and enjoy it. But until then, you, you shouldn't be enjoying anything. You should just be studying anatomy. So far, so far, I think. Oh, see, so now I have a question. All it does is push down. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, nemius. I, all I can find is that plural nemon. So, and it keeps coming off the same word. So. What was the nemius? It was gastro. Oh, gastro. Okay. Cool. I so, need to find out what it means. It, so, um. All it does is just push down. It don't, it it don't allow push. it to go up. It doesn't push. It doesn't push. It pulls. Oh, cool. I thought that's what you said. No, I did not say that. I would never say that. It does not do that. Look at the foot. The leg, look up here, not down there. The muscle is here. Yeah. What do muscles do? Contracts. They contract. What does that mean? They get smoked. No. Closer. What does contracting mean? Small. They get smaller. So the muscle is here. If the only thing it's going to do is contract, which means it's going to get smaller like this. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then it'll go back to its original size, but it's not going to get longer. It's only going to go this way. Well, the tendon comes down from the muscle and attaches here. Mm -hmm. So when the muscle contracts, it pulls the tendon this way. When it contracts, it pulls like this. So like, just like you said. Just exactly like I said right, that time. So when it contracts, this. it goes like this. So that doesn't cause that. That doesn't cause your leg to go like this. No. Right. No. Look, no. Look. Stop. Look. Look. Don't sit down. In order for your foot to go this way, something has to pull it this way. More of the Where would that muscle be located? On the front or in the back? The front. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, so if you have a muscle here. located right here on the front that's attached right here, when that muscle contracts, what's it going to do to the foot? 
Right. Yeah. It's going to pull it this way. Yeah. Can that happen the same time this happens? No. No, no because remember, when one contracts, the other has to be relaxed. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the name of this muscle that you just discovered right here? Um, Where is it found? In the front or the back? The front. Well, the front. The front. So we'll have the word anterior on there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then what bone does it run along? The tibia. The tibia. tibia. So we could call that muscle the anterior, tibialis tibia. anterior. anterior. Okay. Ooh. We could call it that, and that would be perfect, because that would describe exactly where it's located. Anterior. And if you understand where it's located, it's going to pull, you can understand what it does. All right. Yeah. And the name of that muscle is the tibialis anterior. anterior. All right. Yeah. That you just named. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you ready? That's what I, that's what I kept walking back 